I was always very aware of the fact that I was mixed biracial and my mother made it very clear that the world was going to view me and see me as a black woman. When I became a professional, uh, or when I entered the ballet world, it kind of all went out the window. It was the first mm. time that it was like, I I'm not this quiet little mouse. I'm not the little black girl in my school. I'm a ballerina. And that became my identity and my race had nothing to do with it. Uh, which is very strange being that, you know, the, the ballet world doesn't really celebrate or have women of color. And here you are today, the first African-American female principal dancer ever at the American Ballet Theater. Yeah. <laughs> sort of seems like it still shocks you that life yeah. was not supposed to hand you this. No. But you grabbed it. You did. There's not a day that goes by that I feel like, oh, this is normal or that, you know, th this should have happened for me. I'm so grateful for the journey that I've been on and for the opportunities that I have now. In your memoir, Life in Motion, you say over and over again in the first chapter, and then you keep repeating it, this refrain through and through, this is for the little brown girls. You know, I was the only black female dancer in American Ballet Theater for over a decade. You know, I slowly started to realize that I, my purpose was bigger than just being a dancer. And I felt like what I, what I stood for and, and my voice and what I represented was more than me. It was an opportunity for these little brown girls and boys to be able to look at me and see themselves and see a future for themselves in a space where they're not really uh, celebrated or accepted. It's not just the little girls that I meet that experience insane things, you know, at seven years old being a black girl in their school and they're being told by their teachers, you know, uh, you don't belong here. Your skin is the wrong color. Your feet are too flat. Your hair is not, you know, we can't work with your hair and put it in the styles that it needs to be done, you know, for a classical ballet. Um, and then I meet this other generation of women that say, had I had someone like you, I would have pursued right. ballet. And it's like, how many amazing artists have we missed out on because they weren't given support and an opportunity. So I feel like I want to be the voice of so many that didn't have what I have. You meet little girls in ballet going through that now? Yes. I think that, that that's something that's going to take a long time. You also look to history, to an amazing woman that I learned about because of, <laughs> because of you, Raven Wilkinson, mm -hmm. an African-American ballerina who was the only black dancer with her company, all white dance company in the 1950s. Yeah. And she has changed your life. Oh my gosh, like, <sighs> um, she brings yeah. you to tears. I can't remember how old I was, but I was watching this documentary called The Ballet Russe. Yeah. Um, and this black woman came on the screen and she started speaking. And it was the first time that I felt like I recognize myself in another dancer. The fact that I could be, I could envision this incredible future for myself just by seeing her. Like I know what that means for other little girls that are looking at me or other young boys mm -hmm. that are looking at me. Like the power of, of seeing themselves through someone else that's succeeding is, is more than I think we understand. I mean, part of why it is so emotional for you because that was the first time that you thought that could be me. I think something that's hard for a lot of uh, black and brown dancers is that we don't see or know our history within the classical ballet world, and there is a history. Yes. What about race relations in this country overall, outside of the ballet world? As you sit here as an adult and look at the world we're living in today, how do you see it and what needs to change? When I mentor young dancers, especially young African-American dancers, especially young African-American men, I say to them, you know, that it's about how we approach it. You know, it's very easy to get emotional and to get angry. Yeah. And I feel like if you have the right approach and, and you, you educate people, that it's a very different conversation. Uh, you know, I feel like a lot of people just are ignorant to, you know, other people's experiences. What will have told you, I succeeded? I already feel that. Okay. I feel like the impact that I see on communities like I grew up in, um, the, the diversity I see in the audience at the ballet, um, that's what I'm here for. I think that's my purpose, to bring people in, to make them feel that they belong, um, to, to give uh, a future to young minority dancers that never saw this as a possibility for them. To me, that, 
that is, is success and it's happening. And if I had to stop tomorrow, I would be so fulfilled and happy with my life and my career. Thank you.